Today I want to cover some quick tips for Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes. We're still in the pre-release demo phase, but I just wanted to elaborate on some of the mechanics in the game that may not have been super clear with just a tutorial screen. First up, guarding. You can guard with ZL and you can move while guarding. Now I thought guarding was a bit awkward at first, but it appears you can mostly guard forever and take zero damage. I'm pretty sure your guard does break after enough hits though. One major thing to watch out for are red colored attacks. Uh, you can quote unquote guard these, but you will take damage and I do feel like they have a higher chance at breaking your guard. There is a perfect guard mechanic for guarding right before an enemy attack hits you. This will stun enemies and reveal the stun gauge on named enemies, so this is a good reward for getting the timing right. Now if you need to get out of the way of those red attacks, you can dodge with the B button. Great for repositioning, but there is also a perfect dodge mechanic. Dodge right before an attack hits you and for a short time your attacks become critical hits, signified by the brighter red slashes and the yellow numbers. Next, let's talk elemental damage. You may have noticed the three house leaders deal elemental damage on all their attacks, but what does this mean? For Edelgard, fire damage can inflict the burning status which deals damage over time, and if you hit them with a follow-up attack, they may combust. I believe this means an adjutant follow-up, but not completely sure. For Dimitri's lightning damage, it can inflict the shock status. If you send shocked enemies flying, they discharge electricity which deals AoE damage and spreads the shock status to other units. Claude naturally deals wind elemental damage which inflicts the wind torn status. Launching wind torn enemies into the air deals heavy damage and can unleash air blades which deal AoE damage. Keep in mind the magic classes can deal elemental damage with their attack chains and heavy attacks, but lots of units have elemental attack bonuses via their unique ability. For light magic attacks, these have a chance to heal you. Dark magic can inflict the spellbound status which reduces movement speed and reduces defense and res. You also cannot guard damage when spellbound. Last element is ice, which I think might be the most noticeable. Ice damage freezes enemies and you can freeze the named generals. There are a few units with ice based unique action abilities and I think they are quite strong. First is Shamir who inflicts ice damage when you time normal attacks at certain intervals. Second there is Marianne who drops ice balls around her when you get 300 hit combos. Marianne's unique action is surprisingly strong in my opinion. There are some other students like Ingrid and Bernie who also have ice damage unique actions. I do recommend trying them out. Moving on. Very important in combat are the submenus. The R submenu lets you use your two combat arts. A tip regarding combat arts is that they expose the stun gauge. This is useful if you are close to a stun to get those critical rushes. If you hit R plus B, you get two vulneraries per battle. These are your healing items. If you hit R plus A, that activates the awakening state. For the L submenu, very important is L plus X. This brings up the detail screen for the unit you are controlling, including their unique support and tactical abilities. Hit X again for more info, including what a student's crest does. You can also hit the Y button to see the class specific info, such as your class action. You're going to want to do this for pretty much any new character or class you try out. Next, if you're using a mounted unit, L plus B dismounts and remounts. Then I had a lot of questions about adjutants and how to assign an adjutant on the field. You can walk next to an ally and hit L plus Y. There will be an indicator on screen to who you're going to pair up with. When you're paired up, hit L plus A to swap to your partner and L plus Y again to unpair. Let's discuss more in depth how adjutants work. You can pair up on the field like we mentioned, but you can also sign an adjutant via the order screen by selecting a unit, hovering over an ally, and hitting ZR for other actions. Once you're paired up, you get two passive bonuses. In the bottom left, above your HP bar you get a fall up gauge and a guard gauge. These fill up when you deal damage. If the fall up gauge fills up, when you send enemies flying or when you guard, your adjutant does a fall up attack. When the guard gauge is filled, they're going to block the next attack that hits you. One big benefit to pairing up is getting access to partner specials. Basically, if you use your special when paired up, both units use their specials back to back. I believe you do not need both units to have full special gauge, which is really good. And I also believe it doesn't drain the special gauge of the adjutant, meaning you could fire off a partner special, swap to your adjutant, and then buy off a second partner special in a row. Seems kind of busted to me. Last major detail for adjutants require a little bit of work. If your two units have at least support level C, they can access their partner's support and tactical abilities. 
These are not the unique actions like Shez's Shadow Flash Dash, Shez's unique support ability is Mortal Coil, and their unique tactical is Mercenary Creed. If Shez has support level C, they share both of these abilities with their partner. I am sure adjutants will become more impactful when more students are allowed on the field. For example, in the Blue Lions mission, you could have 8 units on the field, 4 playable, 4 AI. If you wanted, each playable unit could get their own AI adjutant. That's all the tips I wanted to share for now. Hopefully this cleared up some questions if you missed a tutorial or didn't understand what is actually happening. We still only have the demo at this time, so I'm sure more mechanics are going to be introduced once we get the full game. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.